Hey, artist Doug Pexley here. Today I want to make a case for painting and or drawing from real life. So today I'm going to paint something kind of unglorious, the wee little onion. And I'm going to make the case why you should sometimes draw or paint from a real live still life or from observation. All right, let's do this thing. Welcome to the voiceover. I'm gonna make the case for drawing from life. What this means is having objects in front of you or your subject in front of you, whether it's a still life, a figure, a portrait, you name it. Landscape, all of it. And create from that, from what you see. There are quite a few reasons to do this. I'm just gonna jump on a few. I'm not saying drawing from life, you need to be realistic or perfect. You can modify as you need, as you want, as the piece of art needs to go. It's a conversation with the object and what you're creating. A lot of famous artists work from life including most of the Renaissance Baroque artists. Picasso did also. Uh, Cubism came out of seeing, but from multiple viewpoints, hence how things break up and move around the canvas. To get into some of the things that I think are important, the first thing really is a teaching tool to learn to see correctly. Um, and this will get into the next uh, one also, but as you look at an object, you study that object, you see how that object sits in space, you see the subtleties of what that object might behold. In these paintings here, you might think of an onion as perfectly round, the little striations, but when you look at an onion, especially the onions I was using here, you'll see the subtlety of how the skin, the outer skin changes color as it's going around the curve where the skin is decoloring around the edges where the skin doesn't fully cover the next layer. These are things you might miss if you're working from memory or from an idea of because you don't always want to paint the idea of. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you want that object to be recognizable as a real object. And again, it doesn't have to be realistic, but there are those subtleties that you will miss if you're just drawing from memory. On a second note, it helps with your hand-eye coordination, seeing an object and translating it to a surface if you're painting or drawing, or if you're sculpting, even same thing. You, you get to practice that mu muscle memory, as it were. And the next time you draw it or paint it, it'll come easier and easier and easier. And at some point, maybe you can completely do it from memory and have some marvelous effects and realism in that, if that's what you're going for. When you're working on a real subject, a live subject in front of you, it's important to also make sure you're lighting it well. You know, if you're outside, you're painting a landscape, finding a spot where the light is falling how you want it, and of course that's gonna change through the course of the painting session. So you'll have to react to changes and all that good stuff. But let's go with the example of the still life here. You get to see how the light plays off the object as like the onion. The onion curves into space back behind the light or 
to the side or what have you. You can see where the highlights are. You can see where the cast shadows are. And as you can tell, maybe I've got company in the studio today that's Bella meowing in the background. Side note, even in made up landscapes or still lives or whatever you're painting, if your light is all over the place, it's not gonna look good. So seeing how the light plays is important too. Of course, this, this all is skill building. So when you do have to invent in your art, you have a well of knowledge. When you're in art school, your first paint, painting, drawing classes, it's all painting from life because those are the skills that make you better. You get to see the color how it is or the shadow or the tone or the chroma as it were. And it gets you ready for that next step, building skill, learning to see hand-eye coordination, very important. Also, this is something you can do to make a simple object, something ordinary, extraordinary. Whether it's just some fruit on a table, a book, a pen, a everyday object, you know, a tree outside, you know, a person sitting calmly or not calmly, I don't care, to make something interesting. And as you can see between the two onion paintings, the two onions were sitting basically on the same bench and I play around with the background. Um, they, they're different, the feel is different, the vibe is different. And if you work from that still life over and over and over, whether it's drawing, painting, whatever, you can get over. You know, that's why I like to do painting sketches of real objects. You paint it many times, quick and you learn what makes an object boring beige as it were or something interesting and granted i'm not saying it's bad to paint or draw from memory from photos from what have you but having the object in front of you being able to move around it being to take that object and move it exactly how you want it to look makes the art more interesting again. Some of the most important artists, like I said in the beginning, used vision to create movements in art. Like, I think it's Albrecht Dürer. He was a German painter. I think he was post-Baroque, I can't remember. Um, but he is one of those artists who really looked and studied while he drew. He was a great, great draftsman and he built blocks as he looked at his subject. You know, the, the blocks of geometry that make up the face or what have. Um, Marcel Duchamp, famously known for his urinal turned on a pedestal and called it art, the ready-mades. He also did stuff like this. I believe the painting was Descending Staircase. I think that's what it's called. Um, but that was the observation of movement while seeing that movement in real life. So this was a quick little, little video making a case for drawing from life. Do you draw from life? I hope you do. Or paint, whatever. I hope you do, I hope you try it, because seeing an object, in my opinion, helps build some of these things. Uh, sorry that it was a little rambly. I hope you enjoyed it though. You know, if you did, you know, do one of those. Um, I think I'm gonna try to be a little more succinct with some of my next videos on the subject of art. Um, I do want to kind of give an update on what I'm doing in life in this weird time. So stay tuned for that. Feel free to subscribe. I would like to know your experiences from painting and drawing from life. Let's get a conversation started. Oh, one more thing. I just started a face group a Facebook group called Hashtag Artist Challenge. I'll post the link below. It's just what it sounds like. I throw up every couple weeks a challenge for artists to complete and post there. Um, 
to stay engaged with other creative people, hopefully, and um, get a conversation started. So go there. Not much is happening yet, but I hope that it will. And we'll uh, see you in the next video. Or something like that. Party on.